Hello, uh, my name is Henry Chu. I'm a product manager at Thermos Fisher Scientific, and I work on the development of protein expression systems. Today, uh, I'm going to spend a, a little bit of time just talking to you a, a bit about the technologies and the strategies um, available to you now in order to significantly increase the amount of recombinant protein that you can get from expression systems. Typically, if you needed to generate a lot of recombinant protein from a mammalian cell, the classic, the classic method has been to, to go through a long, complex, multi-step process in order to create a stably expressing cell line. This typically will take you a month or more in order to do that. Over the last 10 to 15 years, strategy has evolved to be able to take a highly expressing cell like a HEK293, adapt it to suspension culture, and then use it to directly transfect a good number of cells in culture and generate a, a, good, a large amount of protein. And this typically will only take you about five to seven days compared to a month or more when you use a stable cell line. However, the demand for protein continues to increase. And so the question has become, now, how can we get much more protein out of these transient expression systems, yet maintain sort of the fast and very simple protocols um, that are currently in place that allows you to do this within this short time frame? <clears throat> so this is something that, that we've been working on and have developed a number of different uh, uh, solutions uh, and strategies in order to achieve much higher protein expression levels. The core components of a transient expression system are the cells themselves, obviously, the media that you use to grow those cells, transfection reagent in order to introduce the gene that you, uh, for the protein that you want to express into those cells, and then the gene itself. Each of these components can be developed and improved in order to increase the levels of expression. And when you start to add these improvements together, it really add, uh, adds to a significantly higher yield of recombinant protein. Uh, in your system. I'm going to talk about the, these different components of the system and start with uh, the, the, the gene itself where, uh, that you're going to use to express your protein. Gene optimization has become a very valuable tool and a more commonly used strategy in order to really boost the expression levels that you can get for any particular protein from its coding sequence. Um, our team at GeneArt uh, recently did a study where they selected 50 human genes uh, from the NCBI data bank uh, representing five of the most interesting protein classes, protein kinases, transcription factors, and others. And they took those 50 genes and they ran them through their uh, optimization algorithm, then looked at the impact of gene optimization on protein expression. The, the algorithm uh, developed by GeneArt uh, factors in a number of different parameters, not only codon usage, but also a number of different other aspects such as GC content, uh, the presence or absence of cryptic splice sites, uh, premature termination signals, direct repeats, etc. So the 50 genes uh, were run through the algorithm to find the optimized coding sequences, cloned into expression vector, and then uh, tested to see the level of expression that were ach achieved compared to the wild type sequence. So in summary of, 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 the, of the results from the expression, 100% of the gene optimized constructs express, whereas for the wild type genes, roughly 12% of those did not express at all. Of all, all of the 50 genes that expressed, 86% of them expressed at higher levels than wild type, with the increase being up to 25 fold compared to the original gene. The team at GeneArt uh, received six antibody constructs uh, from a collaborator, and they took those antibody constructs, they ran them through their algorithm to optimize the coding sequence. Then they expressed them not only in the, their collaborator's uh, in-house protein expression system, but also in two different expression systems that uh, uh, we have at Thermos Fisher Scientific the Freestyle and the XB293 system. I'll be talking a little bit later on about that XB293 system. You can see from the graph, the um, open bars um, is the expression of the wild type gene. 
whereas the colored bars are expression of the wild type of the optimized gene in, in either the customer's expression vector or a optimized vector from Life Technologies um, in either the Freestyle XP293 systems. So overall, you can see that the expression levels significantly improved both by optimization of the genes using um, better expressing constructs like our PCDNA 3.3 expression vector as well as our transient expression systems, in particular the XP293 system, which is the one highlighted here in, in uh, bright blue. Okay, So let's move on to, to that XP293 system and those components that really help to in increase expression levels. As I mentioned before, we have those these four fundamental components for transient expression. Here we have the cells themselves, Typically, for, trans, uh, for this high-level transient expression work, we use 293 cells and a media that supports the cells and transfection agent. In order to get even higher yields beyond just optimizing a gene, one of the main things you can do is be able to create a, an environment where you have much higher producing cells and, in fact, even more cells in culture. So if you have, for example, you can in, increase the cell density by two to three-fold, Theoretically, all other things being equal, you should be able to get two to three-fold higher levels of protein um, that are expressed from that transient expression system. So this was a strategy we took when we combined these three reagents together and developed a system called XP293. We developed a culture medium that achieves uh, at least a three-fold higher culture density uh, of these cells. Um, <clears throat> We, took, uh, we developed a transfection reagent that's able to very effectively transfect that high-density culture of cells. And then themselves of themselves, we were able to isolate a population that, higher, that had higher per cell productivity. So if we go on to the next slide here, the culture media that we developed called XP293 is media that you can see supports much higher culture densities than most other uh, current systems, including our own freestyle 293 uh, expression media. So 293 cells in suspension culture typically will grow to uh, about four, maybe five million cells per mil at the most. With the XP293 media, we can reach densities of typically between 14 and 18 million cells per mil. The, the actual working range that we, we use for expression is going to be down here in the early log phase of growth. And so the transfection of XP293 is typically done at around two and a half to three million cells per mil. Whereas in these older systems, the transfection density was around a million cells per mil. So we're at two and a half to three times more cells in our culture to begin with, uh, with the XP293 system. Um, just by taking that parameter there, and increasing uh, cell density by two and a half to three times, here's the impact that we see. These are two, uh, freestyle 293 F cells adapted to XB293 media. And they now grow to the higher density. And we did the transfections at uh, two and a half times the density we typically do in freestyle. And a protein that before expressed at about 180 milligrams per liter now expresses in the range of about six to 700 milligrams per liter. Now, the, the transfection reagent that we use for this uh, is. Uh, XB factamine, which was designed specifically for this high density culture setting. Um, in order to really achieve the same sort of uh, transfection efficiency when you have many more cells in culture, we had to develop this specialized reagent for that. Now, one of the other aspects, so one of the other um, uh, parts of the development of the system was we actually took those adapted 293 F cells and then we're able to select a population that have had higher per cell productivity, roughly about 30 to 40% higher per cell productivity. So now you can see that you take the same number of cells, the two and a half million cells per mil at transfection, transfected the, in the same plasmid again, which previously in our older freestyle systems expresses at a little bit under 200 milligrams per liter, and now at high density expresses at around six to 700. These new cells will actually express that at about a gram per liter. So the cells themselves now, we have not only more cells in culture, but each of those cells have higher per cell productivity to really reach the highest levels uh, of expression possible. 
So overall here, I'm showing you um, some results uh, comparing this new XB293 system uh, with an optimized, with optimized genes uh, compared to our Freestyle 293 system. And here we have four examples, human uh, erythropoietin, um, an antibody, uh, a, a protein called crypto, and a GPCR called the beta-2 adrenergic receptor. It's a membrane protein, and we actually express this on the surface of virus-like particles. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, towards the end of this uh, presentation. You can see overall, XB293 generates significantly higher yields than our freestyle system. And also, it's very scalable, just like our freestyle. For example, you can do your expression at a one mil culture. That's a one mil in a, 24, in a well of a 24 well plate. Um, up to a one liter culture in a three liter shake flask. And, uh, and across the board, you have very equivalent uh, volumetric yields and substantially higher yields than in our older uh, freestyle system. We took the scalability and went up as well to bioreactors. Here we show XP293 in an eight liter wave bioreactor. The red lines here um, are the actual wave, the eight liter culture uh, transfections compared to the blue lines, which is a 30 mil shaker flask. You can look at the viable, uh, cell viability, viable cell density, and most importantly here, um, the protein expression um, levels that you get from XB293, whether it's in this eight liter bioreactor or the 30 mil shaker flask. And you basically still get very nice scalability and equivalent volumetric yields, uh, no matter which volumes that you're using. And again, in, in this case, with that 8-liter reactor, we're getting roughly about 5 grams of protein compared to, which is about 7 times higher than what we got in our older freestyle expression system. This is the results that uh, quite a number of collaborators that we've worked with have obtained using this XB293 system. They basically, we asked them to do a study where they took uh, a panel of their proteins in their in their expression vectors, expressed it in their uh, current transient expression systems, and then also followed the protocols and used that expression vector in the XB293 system. And this scatter plot just shows the fold increase in expression they, they saw uh, altogether. So here, there's about almost 100 proteins um, that we received uh, um, the uh, uh, results back from our collaborators. And you can see sort of the, the, the the range of increases, there was a, a, a few of them that didn't increase at all. So altogether about 85% uh, of the proteins uh, increased in expression levels. And everything from a little over um, about 50% increase all the way up to at least a 20 fold increase. And the average increase was around four and a half to five fold. And uh, that's a, a very typical result. See roughly a four to five fold increase in protein expression compared, uh, compared to um, the uh, older transient expression system. So what does that mean when you're able to get so much more protein out of your culture? Uh, a couple of things. One means that actually you can really scale down your work. So if you need a certain amount of protein that pr pr before you had to use, let's say, one liter in order to do the transfection and get that amount of protein, now you can actually drop down to a 200 mil culture or maybe a 300 mil culture and get that same number of uh, same amount of protein that really saves you on on your the effort involved and also in cost this becomes in fact the most cost effective uh, system uh, for generating recombinant proteins the other thing is that this really allows you now to scale down and to be able to express many more proteins at the same time in the same amount of space in your incubator we work with uh, with our collaborators also and developed um, protocols to be able to actually do this transient expression now in a 96 well format. Um, so that protocol is online. You can find that in order to, to scale down into, for example, a 96 deep well block and be able to express now multiple proteins in a, in a much more high throughput fashion. And you can see that the key to, to, to this is being able to shake uh, the, these suspension cultures at the, uh, the right RPM. We actually have to go up to about 1,000 RPM to use this deep well, 96 well block format. When you do that, you get very good levels of expression um, that are scalable just like in the shaker flask and the bioreactors.
one of the other great uh, advantages to the system is that you can use this not only to express just uh, recombinant proteins, but you can use them to express uh, a variety of other macromolecules, such as virus-like particles. And here are the next slides. We have a technology called Membrane Pro, which is used to, to generate virus-like particles. If you, you express the Membrane Pro components with a membrane protein such as a GPCR, uh, G, GPCR or a ion channel, then you can now uh, produce that membrane protein in the context of a virus-like particle. It secretes off the surface of the cells and you can uh, obtain uh, about a 30 to 40 fold enrichment of those membrane proteins compared to if you were to try to express them in adherent cultures and then create, for example, a membrane fraction. Uh, from those proteins. So this is a very powerful system, not only to express um, uh, standard secreted proteins like antibodies, but also membrane proteins via virus-like particles, um, and even to, to uh, do other macromolecules such as, as uh, viruses themselves. Okay. These protocols can also be found online. So um, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Uh, to just give you a little bit of a flavor of some of the uh, these uh, technologies that are now available to really increase your protein expression levels. If you want more information about these uh, uh, this technologies, you can go to, to uh, these pages here. We've got a, a guide uh, for everything you need to go from gene to protein, as well as information on the XB293 system and information on our gene optimization and gene synthesis services through GeneArt. Again, I thank you very much for your time uh, today. Uh...